The broadcast is now. Hello, everyone from the Novetch team. Welcome to today's webinar, NanoCAD Plus and NanoCAD Pro, No Limits, No More. Um, what is NanoCAD and why NanoCAD? This is the question that we will address in today's webinar. I hope you'll get great insight and consider this CAD option. And let me tell you a little bit about today's presenter. Evan Nieris has made his career in the CAD and engineering software industry for 28 years. He's been recognized as a champion for uses of CAD and engineering software. And uh, he has been a powerful voice for users need to control their CAD data. He has been a founder of Scion Research and COFES, the Congress of Future of Engineering Software. And he helped bring together visionaries from design, engineering, architectural, development, and technology companies to understand the role engineering technology will play in the future. So with such great credentials, we're very excited to have him all to ourselves today. And now let me tell you a little bit about Novedge. Novedge is one of the largest online stores for design software. We offer a huge assortment of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's needs. And this is the uh, new minted page for NanoCAD. Um, as I mentioned, NanoCAD is uh, one of the, our newest products, and we're very excited to offer it to you. And uh, for today's webinar attendees, there's a 10% discount. So go on the chat box and um, take out the coupon that we're offering. And um, moving on, you can always find uh, daily software news and limited time promotions on the Novaj blog and Facebook, World Plus, and Twitter. Coming up next week in our webinar, VR and BIM for the residential design. Last but not least, today's webinar has been recorded. And if you want to rewatch it, you can just head on over to the Novages YouTube or Vimeo channels. And now let me uh, give the screen uh, to Evan. And uh, he will take it away and show you uh, NanoCAD first hand. Well, good morning, good afternoon. I I have some good news. I am not going to demonstrate NanoCAD for you because, frankly, anybody who wants to demonstrate NanoCAD generally knows enough AutoCAD they can simply download it and learn themselves. But what I am going to do is start by telling a few stories, some ancient history. If you go back to before any of us were born, in 1956, there was a science fiction author named Robert Heinlein. And in his book called The Door into Summer, he was the first person who expressed the concept of computer-aided design. He talked about a drafting machine that was basically a robot that could be operated like an electric typewriter. And an engineer could sit down in a big chair and tap on the keys and create a picture. And he called it drafting Dan. But he wasn't all that far ahead of his time because two years later in 1958, actually late 1958, several engineers at MIT got together and started talking about this concept of using a computer within the engineering process. And I have a quote here that was written a few years later by Stephen Coons. And uh, he said, we discussed the possibility of using the computer in a much more direct and powerful way in the chain of events that begins with the original concept as envisioned by the design engineer and accumulates in the production of a finished device. We outlined at that meeting a system that would in effect join man and machine in an intimate cooperative complex, a combination that would use the creative and imaginative powers of the man and the analytical and computational powers of the machine, each with the greatest possible economy and efficiency. Now, I know I'm reading something you could have read yourself, but I guess I want to make the point that when they invented computer design, invented it, they weren't inventing computer drafting. They were thinking truly about the design process and all the things that happen from concept all the way to when you create something. And this concept of computer design and the ideas that were developed by Doug Ross, Steve Coons, and the other researchers led to the creation of 
Sketchpad, which was the first legitimate computer design software package. Uh, you might want to check on YouTube, just type in Sketchpad and take a look at some of the videos of it. It's a truly impressive product. Uh, it came out well over 50 years ago, and it has capabilities that even now aren't available in some of the major CAD systems. Let me jump forward a little bit to 71. There was a big gap of time from the, from the late 50s and early 60s to the 70s in the development of CAD, and it was primarily because they had to invent things like computer graphics, and they had to make computers that were fast enough. But by about 71, CAD was pretty mainstream. A fellow named Patrick Hanratty uh, wrote Atom, which was regarded as one of the first integrated CAD CAM systems, and he licensed that software to a large number of companies, one of which was Computer Vision. Several years later, a guy named Mike Riddle, who was working in a steel mill, uh, uh, the steel mill had purchased a copy of Computer Vision CAD software, and he thought it was pretty interesting. He thought he could do better even writing on a PC. So he sat down and spent about two years writing a CAD program on a PC. And during the late 70s, there wasn't, PCs weren't very impressive. But he actually got a working system. And uh, he talked to a friend of his, a guy named John Walker. And John Walker, a few years later, started a software company. And they were going to sell an application it was like a desktop organizer, uh, but he thought, well, maybe they'd sell Mike Riddle's CAD program. So they actually made a deal to make a new CAD program based upon Mike Riddle's CAD program. They reprogrammed it. So they took Mike's program, reprogrammed it, and, and dubbed it AutoCAD. And uh, let's say it was pretty successful. Uh, incidentally, this is my extra credit question. Uh, uh, does anybody know why AutoCAD was so successful? And if somebody reminds me at the end of the presentation, I'll tell you why. It's not the reason you might expect. Years later, AutoCAD had become so successful and so pervasive that there was a need for other CAD programs to be able to interoperate with it, with AutoCAD's native file format, DWG. And a group of CAD developers got together and funded the creation of a nonprofit industry consortium to develop a standard set of libraries so that all software vendors, all CAD vendors could re reliably read and write drawing files. And now that library, it's called TIGA, is used by over a thousand companies around the world. And it's essentially the de facto standard for DVG compatibility. Um, not only AutoCAD work-like programs use it, but programs that are uh, totally unrelated use it, very commonly used. Jumping forward another 10 years or so, a company called Nanosoft was founded. Now, Nanosoft was put together by a group of people who were actually very experienced software developers. They'd done quite a lot of work on third party and vertical market products. And they recognized that they had a problem. They really needed a platform on which they could add vertical products that was economical and actually really worked well. And the problem was that AutoCAD was well, quite expensive. And AutoCAD LT didn't have an API or didn't have a programming interface. So they created a new product called NanoCAD. And it was initially created to build vertical market products on it. So their initial goal was to replace AutoCAD as the CAD platform. And the thought was that the CAD platform was not the most valuable part of the solution. The vertical application was. So they felt that it was important to have a CAD product that really was solid, worked well, but wasn't expensive. Now, NanoCAD today, this is 10 years later, is has grown up into a serious product. It is professional grade CAD. It's not a baby CAD program. It has a familiar interface, the, the standard toolbar type interface, the command line interface, because it was designed from the ground up to be work-alike compatible. It, it wasn't something that was modified to try and make it look compatible. It has a full set of drafting and design tools, the exact same kind that you'd expect in AutoCAD, native DVG compatibility, has a very open API, it has multiple APIs, multiple programming interfaces, 
very fast, very reliable and simple. And the last thing on the list here that I, I didn't mention is it's also economical. It's very reasonably priced. Nanosoft today, the company has grown up too. They have more than one key product. They've got basic NanoCAD, NanoCAD Plus, NanoCAD Pro. They also have uh, NanoCAD construction, NanoCAD construction site, uh, several other products. Most of the key team members are highly experienced. The principal members have been involved in developing more than 70 CAD applications. Now, that's a pretty impressive development team by anybody's measure. There's also about 140 software engineers working at Nanosoft. And uh, for NanoCAD, there's been over 2 million downloads. So even if you may not have heard of NanoCAD, uh, there's a lot of other people who have heard of NanoCAD. It's been used in production for many years in heavy production for challenging critical applications. This is the, the main product line of NanoCAD products. Uh, there are actually some others, but these are the ones that are available in the United States. Going from the left to the right, NanoCAD Plus is a full for professional grade CAD tool with all the stuff you need to do 2D and 3D work, typically architectural or built environment work. NanoCAD Pro adds something very interesting. It adds full feature-based solid modeling, the same type of feature-based solid modeling that you'd expect to see in products such as SolidWorks. Uh, NanoCAD Mechanica is a 2D drafting product for doing mechanical drafting. And of course, construction is for doing buildings. And then NanoCAD Construction Site is a, a fairly cool application. It's designed specifically for people who have to manage construction sites on big building projects and have to keep track of where their cranes go, where, uh, where materials are, what the, what's actually happening all the time. So very powerful product and something that's not commonly available. Uh, there's also two other products that are in beta uh, NanoCAD 3D scan, you can probably guess what that does, and NanoCAD Electro. And I'll let you guess what that one does also. But today we're going to take a look at NanoCAD Plus and NanoCAD Pro. Now, these two products are essentially the same, except for the differences. NanoCAD Pro includes feature based solid modeling. Start with CAD product has to be an effective tool for creating drawings. It has to be computer-aided drafting to start with. Uh, and that means it needs to be usable by anybody who needs to create drawings. But beyond that, CAD program is also a tool for designers. And the difference with designers is that they're actually building intelligence into their drawings. They, uh, uh, they're not just dumb lines, arcs, and circles. There's actually uh, some syntax underlying the work. Now, to start with NanoCAD has a complete full set of, of commands. The command structure on it is extremely robust and it's exactly what you'd expect if you're an AutoCAD user. Uh, all of the uh, geometric creation, modification commands that you're used to, you're gonna find most of them in here, I shouldn't say most, you're going to find almost all of them here. Uh, and actually some more that you wouldn't expect that aren't even in AutoCAD. There's also the user interface. And NanoCAD has most of the user interface uh, um, that you'd expect. Of course, command line, uh, standard pull down menus, uh, icons and toolbars. It has dynamic input which is a, a fairly new innovation. Uh, the thing that it does not have, the, the one uh, user interface it doesn't have, it doesn't have the ribbon style toolbar. And from my perspective, I'm rather happy that it doesn't have the ribbon style toolbar because that thing has been out for, I don't know how many years now, I still can't find the commands I need with the ribbon toolbar. But it's been shown that, that these standard interface um, methods are very effective. And are there, in NanoCAD, they're very, very customizable. 
if a, a study was done uh, that where 10 users actually logged all the commands they used in AutoCAD for a two and a half month period, and uh, they had a program that did statistical analysis and sent this information to NSOP. And with those 10 users, they actually used 413 unique commands. Out of those, there was 255 they used frequently. And that corresponds to about 10% about of the full AutoCAD tool set. So people were only using 10% of what I had offered. But out of those commands, if you look at the, at the, at the pie chart, uh, NanoCAD and, and NanoCAD Plus and NanoCAD Pro both have 98.97% of the functions people use already there. And the other 1% are things that are possible to work around. So, you won't go. You won't be using NanoCAD wondering uh, what commands are missing. The general idea is that you want to be able to create any kind of drawing that you need to create using NanoCAD. You don't need a tool that can only do some things but can't do others. So whether you're doing architecture, land management, engineering, communication, spaceships, uh, simple tables. NanoCAD can handle that type of work. The general rule of thumb is that you're, if you're an experienced AutoCAD user uh, and you know what you're doing, it's going to take you one to two days to become comfortable with NanoCAD and to find the commands and uh, get, find your way around. And this is kind of important to have this kind of fast learning curve because to start with, it's easy to find people who know how to use AutoCAD. Uh, it's hard to find people who know how to use some obscure CAD system that works in a different way. So it's easier to find specialist people who can do the work. It takes less time and money to implement to make the transition because of this. And it's possible to transition from AutoCAD or from another CAD system, similar CAD system to NanoCAD without interrupting your work in process work in progress. You can actually uh, transition working on live jobs. And uh, notably, if you're transitioning from another AutoCAD workalike product, they almost certainly use the exact same libraries for reading and writing DVG files that NanoCAD does, which means that you're almost guaranteed compatibility without any problems. Now, some people call NanoCAD a clone, but it's, well, it's an elegant clone, uh, but it's actually quite a bit more than a clone. The general idea is that if you look at this as the other solution, if, if you compare the, look at what NanoCAD offers in its, in its DBG compatibility, in its API, its user interface, and the tool set it has, uh, it's very, very close to what the other, the other solution like a full-blown AutoCAD will have. But if you look at the unique features that, that NanoCAD provides on top of this, it actually provides substantially more value and capability than the other tools do. I'm gonna start talking about some examples of, uh, of how NanoCAD works. Start with working with EBG, one of the biggest problems that with DVG is that uh, DVG files get corrupted. Uh, particularly, this is an example of uh, when you export a file from AutoCAD and the Z coordinates have corruption problems. Here, this is going to be a, a video that shows importing a file that's actually corrupted. Uh, and you can see it needs to have an audit run on it. And it's going to demonstrate the process of running an audit on it. One of the interesting things about the uh, Tiga libraries that underlie uh, NanoCAD is that um, it's actually, if you have a corrupt AutoCAD file and, you, and it won't open an AutoCAD, you can actually bring it into NanoCAD, fix it, or, or run an audit on it 
and correct it inside of NanoCAD and send it back to AutoCAD, uh, and it will fix files that AutoCAD can't fix. This is going to show converting the 3D to a 2D file. And that's the process where the um, a complex 3D file that has corruption problems has been fixed in NanoCAD. One of the important issues with any CAD program is how fast it deals with EVG data. And here's a graphic that shows uh, the performance. This is uh, NanoCAD version 8 versus version 8.5, which will be coming out soon. And it shows substantial improvements in performance. In fact, if, if we look at the differences in performance, uh, you notice that with four physical cores on a processor, performance it can be improved from 1.7 to 5.5 times faster. This is something that's actually unusual with CAD systems. With most CAD systems of this type, you don't get a lot of advantage of multiple cores. But in the case of NanoCAD, you're actually gaining substantial performance but with multiple cores and with higher speed uh, graphics cards. One of the things that um, AutoCAD doesn't do well out of the box is deal with raster data. Uh, and NanoCAD, it turns out, does work with raster data quite nicely. The, uh, it has what's called a raster underlay capability. Uh, in AutoCAD, they call it a CAD overlay. And uh, actually, the developers who developed this technology at, at NanoCAD developed the original CAD overlay technology that's used by Autodesk. But this is showing bringing in a scanned file, lining it up, essentially rubber sheeting it to make it to make it uh, match and make it scale properly, and then showing the process of cleaning up some of the existing uh, uh, parts of the scan document. Here's the rubber sheeting process. The beauty of having this kind of a raster underlay capability is it's possible to take scanned documents or PDF documents, or other basically very dumb documents and smarten them up and turn them into legitimate clean CAD files. And the tools that come in NanoCAD Plus are very effective. Uh, You can see the blue scan document being replaced with black CAD entities. I talked about how uh, NanoCAD Pro includes 3D feature-based solid modeling. If I, I didn't include it in my history lesson, but uh, if we again go back to ancient history, back in the mid-1980s, a guy named uh, Sam Geisberg started a company called Parametric Technology Corporation and came out with what was in effect the, the first really good workable 3D system for, de, for, for manufactured products. And that system was based upon several technologies. 
it included uh, the capability of representing three-dimensional solids as what are known as boundary representations. It included what are known as design features. It was sketch-based construction, and the sketches uh, were built using uh, two-dimensional constraints and parametrics. Well, it happens that NanoCAD Pro has all of those technologies that are the are required in order to build a modern feature-based solid modeler. So you can see these uh, two menus show uh, 3D features, 2D sketches, geometric constraints, parametric dimensions. It includes all of them, and the technology is extremely advanced. Here's a video that will show. This is not just a, a 3D um, chunk that's dumb. This is actually a true feature-based model. And in this case, uh, we're going to uh, create a section across and then create views. And you can see you can actually create live views, including sections. And these are associative to the original model. They're not just dumb copies. Uh, so they're exactly as you might expect to, to do in any other high-end mechanical CAD system. Create multiple viewports. and then modify the model. In this case, I'm going to create a, a working plane. I'm going to add geometry on it. constrain the jump to with a parametric dimension. And then subtract, project subtract that to create a countersink. And you can see the countersink in, in, the, in the section view on the right. And then there's a chamfer at the bottom of the countersink that's just been added. And the table that comes up is all the parameters, all the parametric dimensions. So uh, NanoCAD Pro allows you to actually change all your parametric dimensions directly in a table. Uh, you don't, they're not spread out all over the place. We have to chase them down in a feature tree, although it, it, it does have a history tree, uh, just as other 3D MCAD systems do. Another capability that both NanoCAD Plus and NanoCAD Pro has is the support for point clouds. Now, this is not just point clouds from a coordinate measuring machine. This is from LIDAR data, which means that these images you're looking at here, uh, they look like the solid images. They're actually clouds of points that were generated by a laser. And uh, we're looking at tens of millions of points here. With point clouds, you can do quite a, quite a lot of interesting things, uh, collect landscape data, new construction, construction checking, monitor infrastructure. Uh, one example I've, I've heard was where they used LIDAR to uh, scan airplanes after they had hard landings to see if they tweaked the airplane. 
Now, LiDAR, it can be very fast, very accurate, but you need to be able to handle the data very rapidly. And uh, the point cloud support in NanoCAD is not an afterthought, it's actually built in and it's extremely fast and it can handle extremely large point clouds. These are massively large point clouds. You also can navigate easily through them. There are clipping and section tools and you can, there are also tools for navigating such as uh, orbiting, walking through or fly through. And you can segment point clouds as well based upon color. It can be uh, spatially uh, based upon model structure, based upon elevation. So whichever way you want, you can segment it. Multiple viewports also. NanoCAD also includes a very robust application programming uh, interface, actually multiples of it, uh, as well as the API, there's the developer club that's available to anyone who wants to do, who wants to become a registered developer. And uh, there are currently close to 4,000 registered developers. Uh, there's no cost for it, and it gets you directly connected up to the people who actually know uh, how to do development work. So there's tremendous support at, at Nanosoft for developers. NanoCAD actually has multiple APIs. Uh, the first API, the most standard one, is the classic C++ API that's equivalent to what AutoCAD has. Uh, the .NET API is, is a more modern type, but the most interesting of them, to my mind, is the MultiCAD API. This is a C++ API that actually allows cross CAD platform application development, which means that if you want to develop a vertical application that runs on NanoCAD, AutoCAD, BricsCAD, or any other similar system that, that has, a has a standard AutoCAD-like API, you can develop a multi-CAD API and the same binary will run on all of those different systems. Uh, which is quite unique. In addition to the standard APIs, there's of course standard scripting languages such as Lisp, JavaScript, VBScript. And down in the lower right hand corner, you can see the address for Developers Club, developer.nanocad.com. Uh, I encourage you to uh, visit and, ch and check out the developer support. It's really quite good. Developer support provides software development kits, free licenses for developers, the dedicated forum, uh, input on new features, and bug tracking. So all the support is there. Uh, one of the problems that's been a common problem and it's been one that people have been complaining about a lot is the licensing terms for, uh, well, not just for AutoCAD, but for, for many applications. Uh, in particular, there's been quite a lot of complaints about uh, companies going from a perpetual license to a subscription model. Well, Nanosoft is a subscription model also, and there's a good reason for it. The reason for the common reason for a subscription model is that it allows them to make sure that users are not using software that's three or four years old, that the bugs have been fixed in newer versions, but people are still fighting bugs. The problem though is that some people don't like having to pay every year for the software. So to start with the subscription model on NanoCAD is very cost effective. If you take a look at the numbers listed here uh, for NanoCAD plus one year subscription is $180 or network is 220. Uh, but you notice three year is just simply three times what the one year is. But the difference with a three-year subscription is that if you buy a three-year subscription, when it's over, you get a permanent license to use the, the most, the newest version of that software. So essentially, for $540 NanoCAD Plus, 
you get a permanent license with three years worth of subscription, three years worth of maintenance built into it, which uh, if you compare that cost to what you might pay for any other full AutoCAD equivalent product, that is any other CAD system that, that, that includes all the capabilities, including full AutoCAD compatible APIs for customization, I think you'd find uh, it's hard to match that. So that is the extent of my presentation. Uh, I'm open for questions and answers at this point, if anybody has any good questions. And I'll come back to the, the question I asked earlier about the, the extra credit question. Why was AutoCAD so successful in the early days? Thank you, Evan. That was really insightful. So not a baby cad. We got that. So great. Uh, um, the pricing alone is super smart. And, um, you know, I urge everybody to ask the questions now because um, this is your chance to uh, to get Evan's uh, advice and tips. And, um, you know, if you want to have, you know, I, I think he, he demoed really well why, um, you know, what are the difference with other CAD, but if you have a specific CAD in mind that you want to compare, this is the, the time. In fact, wait, we have a question right now. What is their equivalent of dynamic blocks, a multi-line leader feature in AutoCAD to allow for blocks with leaders and flexible M text with leaders. Uh, let me, um, how about Evan, I will assign the question to you so you can read it and make sense of it. Let me see if you well, get I it. I actually know what the okay. question is. Okay. And the answer, the answer is, uh, I, this is terrible to say, but um, uh, one of my friends at Nanosoft told me what they were doing. They were implementing a technology to, to handle this particular kind of situation. And it's not just a stand, standard dynamic block. But, uh, but I don't have the answer. I don't remember it. I just remember that I was told. So um, uh, if what I'd recommend is the email address down there, support nanocad.com, uh, send a message to that. I'm not trying to blow it off, but that would be the quickest way to get the answer. Uh, or if you want to send an, uh, an email message to, to me, I'll forward it and get an answer from Nanosoft for you. Okay, cool. And uh, there's also uh, another question that says, um, also version 5 does not seem to have imperial scales. How about that? Well, this is version 8. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, version 5 actually does have quite a bit of imperial but there, I think there may have been a few things that needed some work on it. But version eight is uh, um, has uh, complete support for Imperial or, or ANSI standards. Okay, cool. Um, if you have any other questions, we're here for a couple of extra minutes. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, Evan. So if you get a subscription, there's no you know, problem with version. You get the latest and the yeah. most yeah, recent that's, that's, and all the updates. Totally, and that's the, you know, that's, that's, that's the good thing about a subscription. A, yes. Uh, there but, is a reason why. So well, don't bad, underestimate the, that. The bad thing about subscriptions usually is that the, the vendors who are going that way charge you extra money. They use as an excuse to charge more money. But Nanosoft recognizes that the economics of this are that many people are buying NanoCAD at, uh, because, well, in response to the reason why Autodesk was so successful. So the answer to my question earlier, the extra credit question was, the reason why Autodesk was so successful early on is because they had no uh, hardware lock or uh, called a dongle uh, on the software and people could pirate the software easily back in the early 1980s. And many people pirated the software, all of their competitors uh, particularly companies such as VersaCAD had hardware locks on their software, and so they couldn't be pirated. So AutoCAD became very popular because lots of people had it and had copies they hadn't paid for. And eventually over time, many of those people did get legal as it were. Um, 
AutoCAD was also very successful because they had a very good dealer channel. They had an extremely good training center program. Uh, they were uh, very good at education. So I, I give them a lot of credit for doing a lot of things right. But that one thing of, of allowing piracy for the first few years in order to gain market share was a, a bit of a stroke of genius. And incidentally, now many people find that uh, uh, buying NanoCAD is an excellent alternative to pirating AutoCAD because when uh, the Business Software Alliance catches you pirating AutoCAD, they make you pay full price for every copy that you have. And that's uh, you know, pricey. Yeah, that's pricey. And also, you know, research shows that if a product is reasonably, reasonably priced, people prefer always to buy than to pirate. So um, hopefully that's the trend that will, you know, will start with the, the subscription um, for NanoCAD is uh, is very reasonably priced. So good well, luck. Subscription with subscription NanoCAD includes priority support. So you actually get answers from the people who know the answers with NanoCAD as opposed to um, you know, just on your own. The yeah. Your own call. Yeah. Cool. Cool. That's uh, yeah, what's not to like? And what's the percentage of firms in the U.S. moving to NanoCAD? Do you have any idea? This is one of the questions that we just received. I I have no idea what it is. Make I it know up. That, well, <laughs> we're, talk, we're talking about two million downloads around the world. Okay, cool. Uh, I mean, it, it's a it's a substantial number. The product is growing, and. Uh, you know, there are competitive products out there that are, that are also AutoCAD alternatives. And out of those competitive products, NanoCAD is considered one of the very, very good ones. And there's, you know, there's other people I know in the industry who have competitive products who I, I like their products as well. But I think NanoCAD over the long haul is going to continue to be strong. Yes, I believe so. So great. Thank you so much. If this is it, for questions, I think I will take over uh, the screen and um, hold on a second. Let me get back to hopefully you'll be able to see it right away. Uh, let me know if that's not the case. And I want to thank everybody for attending today and take advantage of this time you spent with us and uh, go explore, download the trial. And if you think it's um, a good deal and a good software, you can purchase at NoVeg with a 10% discount up till until uh, and through uh, March 1st. The link for the coupon code is shown in our chat box right here on the control panel of GoToWebinar. And I want to remind everyone to visit our page at NoVeg.com where you can find both NanoCAD Plus and NanoCAD 8. And next week webinar will be about VR and BIM for the residential design. And to rewatch today's webinar, you can find it on our YouTube and Vimeo channels. Just search for NoVeg. Our webinar playlist has webinars for every software taste. Thank you so much, Evan. That was a, that was a great history lesson and um, a great overview on NanoCAD. We're very excited to have you on board and looking forward to a next our next webinar already. Maybe you can, you know, demo the software uh, for us uh, next time. How about that? Thanks again, everybody, today, and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.